Hi everybody, my name is Matt and this channel is called What Matters to Matt and if you are new to my channel, welcome and if you are coming back to my channel and have seen more of my videos, welcome back. On this channel, what I try to do is I try to share with you the things that I'm doing to be in the best possible shape, both mentally and physically possible as I can to be there for the most important thing in my life, which is my family. Now that I have that out of the way, today's video what I wanted to share with you was I wanted to do a little bit of a review, a little bit of a reaction video to a video that was put out by Obese to Beast. Now, if you look at the thumbnail for my video, you probably already know what I'm going to talk about. Obese to Beast, just a couple of weeks ago, put out a video where he was reacting to a, another YouTuber, a smaller YouTuber, smaller relative to him, not to me, where they were talking about how 75 hard, a challenge out there, a mental toughness challenge, some people would consider it a fitness challenge, uh, was not for them and they felt that it wasn't really the kind of thing that they would suggest to very many people. And spoiler alert, this is where Obese to Beast sat on this issue. Now for me, I came out of this a little bit differently after watching his video. It piqued my interest. I went back, looked at 75 Hard myself and decided, you know what, this might be something that I wanna do. So over the last couple of weeks, I was really, really thinking about this. And as of yesterday, I actually started on my 75 Hard challenge but I'll touch on that in a little bit. But first of all, let's just go over some of the things that John said in his video and just give you an idea of whether I agree, whether I disagree. This is not gonna be a full uh, reaction video to Obese to Beast video. I'm just gonna look at a couple of his points. I will be sure to link his video in my description down below. And also if I can find it, I'll also link in the description the video that uh, he was originally reacting to. Now, what I wanted to do here, and John does go over it quite well, obese to beast, but I wanted to go over some of the rules around 75 hard just to give you a little bit of a framework of what I'm reacting to here. And this is framed as a mental toughness challenge. It's something that is uh, something that hopefully that once you come out the other end of this, if you are successful in the 75 days, it provides you with some mental toughness. So it is a little bit less framed as more of a fitness journey. Although if you do a lot of research, one of the main things you see is people posting their before and after pictures uh, along with their sort of review or anything that they do with the 75 hard challenge. That's for obvious reasons. And I'll get in very quickly with you what the rules are for 75 hard challenge so that you have an idea bear with me for a second if you've already heard of these but the 75 hard challenge now it is a program that was put on by andy frisella now andy is a very very interesting guy um, through this research that i've done over the last couple of weeks it has actually brought me to uh, wanting to listen to more of his podcast he has a very popular podcast uh, he is a very successful entrepreneur and he is very very opinionated. Do I completely agree with everything that Andy says? That's for another video because uh, in a lot of ways, no, but I seldom agree with everything that somebody says, but that doesn't mean that I don't listen to some of their advice or it doesn't mean that I don't value their advice. I think it's important to see all sides of things. If you haven't checked out Andy before, you'll know exactly what I mean. He uh, has very strong opinions on a number of things, but enough about Andy. The 75 hard challenge, uh, basically there's just a basic set of rules. And this is one of the reasons why I got so interested in it after watching Obese to Beast video is that I had heard of it before. I wasn't really that interested in it to begin with, but after watching Obese to Beast video, oddly enough, which is we'll get into is a little bit more about why he might not want to do 75 hard challenge and why he doesn't recommend it. It got me curious. And after looking through the rules and looking through the basics and seeing if it would fit into my life, I decided that I would take the plunge and I would actually start the challenge, uh, which I started yesterday. So I'm on day two of my 75 hard challenge and here are some of the basics first of all you are to follow a diet this can be any diet and he doesn't actually put any rules on this other than that you can't have cheat meals now probably in a future video if i go down the road more with this 75 hard challenge i'll talk a little bit more about what i mean uh for me what that means by no cheat meals uh, because for a number of folks no cheat meals basically would mean anything that you might consider to be bad food no foods to me are bad foods for me cheat meals would be more of viewing it as a binge uh binging and eating over my calories and not 
staying sort of within the macros that I want to be at because I do follow the anabolic diet. So uh, for me, it's a little bit different. Uh, that's a little bit vague. And you'll see in a lot of his rules, a lot of these rules, they are a little bit vague and they are a little bit flexible. And I'll get into why, uh, why I think that's important and why I think that that made this challenge something that I wanted to do. No cheat meals, uh, follow a diet for 75 days. Just, uh, I would just make sure that it's something that you're going to be successful with. Uh, two, oh, and also on the diet, it is, there is a rule of no alcohol. Now, I haven't actually talked about it much on my channel, but that will absolutely be no problem for me, or at least I don't think it'll be a problem for me, as I am a non-drinker for a number of reasons that I will probably share in the future if we get to that point. If I get to know you a little bit better, I will share that information with you, but no alcohol, no cheap meals, follow a diet, 75 days. Uh, and then there is the two workouts. Now he frames this as two 45 minute workouts and they have to be at least three hours apart. Probably the hardest part for me on that is spacing them out three hours apart. Sometimes my schedule in the past, if I was doing two days, which I have done before, so I'm used to doing two days, not something that I've done that much recently, but I have done that before because I always like to get a weight session and some cardio in. And so a lot of days I was doing two days already. Also take a progress picture and this is something that you're expected to do also every day. That's probably going to be one of the hardest things because it's just something that I have to remember and I have to make a routine. I try to do it right when I get up so I can get it out of the way. It just becomes part of my morning routine but taking the progress picture is also uh, one of the things that they're asking for you to do on this program and drink a gallon of water. That is one of the other rules. Now drinking a gallon of water shouldn't be that hard for me. I've done that sort of thing in the past. The only thing is, is that I make sure that I'm keeping up with it throughout the day. So I'm not stuck. Just keep up with it throughout the day. Take it for what it's worth. I think that's probably a benefit as well. And 10 pages of reading. Now for me, either a self-help or some sort of an entrepreneur book, something that's going to uh, make you better. Uh, because ultimately, this isn't just a physical challenge. This is supposed to be a mental toughness challenge. Ultimately, let's skim over some of the uh, comments by Obese to Beast and some of the things that he said in his video that had me thinking one way or the other and just what I think of uh, what he's saying. You guys know how I am. Like, one of my biggest things is uh, sustainability. And this type of this type of stuff just isn't sustainable. Okay, so John makes a comment here where he's talking about this type of stuff not being totally sustainable. For me, um, that's kind of a mixed bag. It's not necessarily the truth that it's not sustainable. I will agree that this probably isn't sustainable to most people. More importantly for me is that is not necessarily my goal and I'm not sure that should be your goal if you're doing some sort of a challenge. Now, Andy does go on to say that this is a lifestyle and there's ultimately more things beyond 75 hard. I'm not thinking of it thinking of it as a sustainable thing. I'm thinking it of as something that I'm looking to uh, kickstart some sort of a journey, just something new, something to get me motivated. And I think probably one of the most important things I'll say to that is if you're doing any program, if you're doing anything that is really intense, at least uh, by the time you're well in the program and you're about to finish the program, but certainly probably a better thing would be to think about this before you even start the program is really have um, a little bit of a reality check on exactly what you're going to do once you're finished it. What's your plan? Is your diet going to change? Do you plan on uh, decreasing, uh, going on a diet and decreasing your weight and um, then just bumping up calories? Is your diet going to change completely? Are you going to choose not to eat nearly as clean? Uh, have some of these questions, have some of these things at the forefront of your mind, even when it comes to reading a book. Is this something, it seems silly, but is this something that you're going to continue to do is read a book every single day, but have a plan. And I think a lot of times some of these programs uh, get a little bit of a bad rap because people say things like they're not sustainable. Well, for me, if I'm on a diet and right now I am, uh, yesterday I stepped on the scale and I was 194 pounds and I want to be more like 170, maybe even 165 if I want to get really, really shredded. But my goal is not to continue eating in that kind of deficit once I get 
down there. So uh, I don't really see it as a is it sustainable or not thing. This is something that I plan on doing now and I will make adjustments later. So I think it's important for me to have an exit plan. Some of that comes from recognizing whether it is sustainable or not. But do I agree with John here? Some respects, yes, it may not be sustainable for a lot of people. Am I concerned about that? No. Ultimately, for what I'm trying to get out of this challenge is not for it to be sustainable. It's for it to change some of my habits, work on my own mental toughness, and get to reach my fitness goals, but uh, it doesn't have to be sustainable. I just need to have an exit plan once I get on the other side of this challenge. So I, I do want to say, to be fair... She did add, I think she added like guitar. She had to play guitar for a certain amount of time every single day. And then also she had to stretch every single day. Okay. So I think that that, to be fair, she also did a little bit extra. So, you know. Okay. So I actually agree with John here to uh, be fair. She did actually add more to this challenge. She didn't go into this with just the basics of what the challenge were. She added more right off the bat. And for me, if you evaluate the program and you find maybe that's going to work for you, uh, that's great for me. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to start out at least the first couple of weeks and uh, just do the basics of the challenge. Obviously, I'm going to be doing other things with my life. Uh, my intent probably is to add uh, recording more videos and probably getting in front of the camera every single day. Not necessarily posting every single day because that would be a lot with what I'm currently doing, but uh, at least talking to the camera every single day and uh, just recording my thoughts on different things. That's that's something that I'm probably going to add, but I'm not going to do that for the first couple of weeks because I want to settle in with at least the basics to make sure I'm successful in that. And um, yeah, so I agree with John on that. It can be a little bit much to add things right off the bat. Uh, and that's not necessarily a fault of the program. The program doesn't say that you have to add other things. It suggests that you can. And if you're doing really good and things are really rolling along, maybe that's helpful that you add more things so you've got more of uh, things, goals that you can hit on a daily basis. But if your goal ultimately in the beginning is to successfully complete the program, it's hard to argue that the program's not right if you've added extra things to that to begin with. But if you feel like you have to do that and you have no choice, it can very easily suck the joy out of that thing. Okay, and all I want to say here, I know I'm stopping this a few times and reacting to a number of different things, but for me, um, the idea of thinking that I have to do something and I'm scheduled to do it actually is a little bit of a benefit. And I'll say that mostly from a workout standpoint, but also a diet standpoint, is that sometimes that helps me get over the hump. Uh, there are going to be plenty of days and most days I'm super excited to go to the gym, but if I'm extra tired, if I just don't want to do that second workout of the day, uh, the way I find a lot of my success is in my consistency. So knowing that I have to do something, it doesn't force me into not liking it. It doesn't force me into um, not wanting to do it. And it doesn't force me into just going through the motions. This is just for me personally. This is just how I feel about it, that I like the idea of kind of having a list of things that I have to do that helps motivate me on those days that I just don't feel like doing it and I just don't feel like sticking to the diet and I want to give up on it. Knowing that I have to do these things is a positive for me so I don't totally agree with John on that point. I see where he's coming from but I don't agree. So I mean this is what happens when anyone goes on a, a diet that is too restrictive, right? Like where it's too all or nothing. Like this is something that that happens to so many people, but I think that this is one of the the other problems with 75 hard. Okay, so the only point I wanna make here is that, and I kinda of touched on it in the beginning, is that one of the things that I like about this is actually some of the flexibility in it. We talk about it being very rigid and you have these rules and you can't stray from any of these rules, but one of the rules is sticking to a diet. So you kinda of set that for yourself. Now, no cheat meals, again, that can be defined in a number of different ways and it's very dependent upon what your diet is. So I think with the diet and with the other things in this program, what's really important is to, before you even get started, is to legitimately look at it and see and ask yourself the question, are you going to be able to finish it? Are you going to be able to stick to it? In the diet that you're doing, are you going to be able to do that for 75 days? Because 
Because for me, uh, what's important when it comes to diet, and I choose a diet, the anabolic diet, uh, that I'm able to keep up with is that it does have a little bit of flexibility because uh, it's just the way my mind works. Uh, if I'm not able to stick to it, I'm not going to do it anyways. Uh, it's going to blow up on me. And I get what he's saying. Again, he's saying that if you're too rigid and you're too restricted, oftentimes what that leads to is binging, which I've had major struggles with in the past, and I'll talk about in other videos. Um, uh, but ultimately can lead to binging, can lead to all sorts of negative things if you're too rigid on your diet. But um, this is not what the challenge is saying. It isn't saying that you have to um, stick to some crazy, all clean, don't eat any of the bad foods diets. It's saying stick to the diet that you choose uh, and stick to the diet that's going to get you to the goals or what you're trying to accomplish during this challenge. So there can be some flexibility there as long as you're sticking within your constraints. For me, again, anabolic diet. Mostly the way that I define that is make sure I'm getting enough protein in the day and my calories get adjusted based on what my goals are. The other macros, a little bit less important, but I'll get my protein in the day, whether that's whey protein or whatever it is that I have to do towards the end of the day to get there, I'll get there. So um, I don't totally agree with John on this, mostly just in the sense that that's not what this program is saying. It's not saying that you can't eat what you want to eat. It's saying that pick a diet and stick to it to get to your goals. Understand that you do not have to push yourself to the brink at every single day of your life. It's not, it's not necessary. You can absolutely see changes doing the type of schedule that she decided to make for herself, right? You should not feel bad about not doing everything all at once. So I agree with John on this. Do you have to do this program? No. Um, and can you absolutely make positive changes in your life without doing this particular program or setting this many rules? Absolutely. But it doesn't mean that you can. It doesn't mean that it's unnecessary for some people. Now, he mentions unnecessary a number of times in this video, and I haven't touched on one of those points or one of those times in particular, sort of in doing this uh, reaction review to his uh, video. And I'll probably end with that because he does bring it up a lot. But just on this point, I do agree. You can absolutely make changes and they don't have to be this much. No, this is not a program for everybody, but it can be a program for somebody. And in my case, that somebody is me. And I want to make it clear in this video, it, I'm assuming the people that are doing 75 hard already have already left a mean comment and they're mad at me. But John, I would never say a mean comment about you. I absolutely love your stuff. I love your videos and I'm going to continue to watch them. So yes, I'm doing the 75 hard challenge. And yes, I am still watching this video. This video is for the people that come up to me and ask if, if I think they should do it. My opinion is that I, I don't think you should do it. If you're doing it and you're having a great time on it, that's great. I'm not saying that you're lying, okay? All right. And I just wanna jump in here. I get, again, where John's coming from. He says, my opinion is that I don't think that you should do this challenge. That is something that you would say to somebody if he was asked about it. Uh, for me, I'm a little bit different. I would say my opinion is that you should really look into the challenge. And if you're interested in it, look at different reviews, different people that have done it, come and join me on my journey as I go through this 75 hard challenge and see if it is something that you want to do. And for some of you, very much so. And for me, at least I think, as I'm starting down this journey of the 75 hard challenge, that it is gonna have a positive impact on my life and it's gonna do exactly what I'm hoping that it will do. So my opinion is to absolutely do this program if you think that it's going to benefit you, but make sure that you uh, take a look at it and really look at what the rules are and look at your next 75 days. Is this something that you're going to be able to do? If not, if you've got something coming up that you know for sure, some big vacation where it's just not gonna be possible to do all these 
these things and yeah sure don't do the program if you think that that's a little bit too intense and two day workouts is too much for you although many of those workouts can be just a walk it doesn't have to be a run or anything too intense then yeah sure don't do the program but if somebody was asking me whether they should do the program i would probably my response would be i'm trying it out because i think it might benefit me but you have to be aware that it is pretty intense and um if you're not into that sort of thing if there are things about this program that uh you think you're not able to do then uh, of course don't do it but uh my opinion is if it works for you do the program Okay, so I'm not really gonna go over any more of that video. Again, I will put uh, both John's video and the other video that he was reviewing. I'll put links to those down in the description down below. Uh, my opinion is, again, the 75 hard challenge is absolutely something that I'm interested in. And originally I wasn't going to do it. I had seen it on uh, TikTok. I had seen it in many different places, Instagram, uh, YouTube, even Facebook, that people were doing the 75 hard challenge and uh, I wasn't really interested in it before and then I watched this video from John and I respect his opinion on so many things that I decided to look into it a little bit more and that's probably why it's taken me a couple of weeks to do this video is is that I was really trying to decide whether this was right fit for me right now or not and I looked at my schedule over the next few months and it is going to be tight and two days is going to be tough and there are going to be days that I don't want to do this, but I like setting goals. I like having challenges. I think this is going to be good for me. Uh, I was actually really attracted. I know it's 75 hard and it is a little bit of a grind and it's meant to be framed that way. Uh, but I was actually attracted to some of the flexibility that I could pick some of those things like my diet, like what the workouts were going to be. Yeah. And even, even what books I was going to read as long as they were nonfiction, all of that, uh, attracted me to it. Uh, if you like this video again, please remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more of my content and come along with me on the 75 hard challenge journey please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time i put out a new video i hope you enjoyed this tune in to obese to beast just has some absolutely wonderful content and any Frisella. I'm going to be doing a number of videos coming up here about different YouTubers that I think are worth your time watching. Does that mean that you have to uh, agree with everything they're saying? No, but that means that they're worth your time to watch. Obese to Beast, definitely one of those. Andy Frisella, one of those. If you've seen any of my other videos, uh, Coach Greg, you're my man. You're in a lot of uh, my videos in terms of what I suggest you folks watch. But that's it. Uh, this channel is called What Matters to Matt. Ultimately, what matters to me most is my family, and I will see you in the next one.